together now. No more beef, it's on me. I want a good, efficient draw, present out, two rounds, as soon as I get to full presentation. Come up, drive out, two rounds. All right, come up, drive out, two rounds. Come up, drive out, two rounds. And now I want to start building up to five. I can do it with two, I should be able to do it with five. Sustainability is gonna come from that support side grip. What I was showing the second relay is watch my support side grip as I really crush down from here. I'm building a barrier for recoil. I have a barrier for recoil here with that leverage dominant side grip, and I build that clamshell design, barrier for recoil on the support side grip. And I'm doing that now all from draw for five rounds. Draw, present. I grab this, feed it. As I grab this, feed it, right? The rounds are going the right way. I have seen plenty of guys run it with rounds forward, and the way they're grabbing it is like this, and then they're coming up and in, all right? To each his own. I've also seen guys run max forward and then come in between, and then in. It does not work for me. I've got little T-Rex arms and it's not gonna work, all right? For me, I like to run straight back and straight in, leaving that thumb high for what? Sending the bolt home. Right? How many of you are running Ambi guns? Ambi is the way of the future. Everything's going Ambi, why? Because it's more efficient. I would love to see someone race me with a non-Ambi gun and beat me with an Ambi gun. Probably not gonna happen. Why? Because it's just more ergonomically more efficient. Now, the more variables you add to the gun, the more variables you have for failure. So, if you're sending hundreds of thousands of rounds a year through guns like we are, uh, we shoot about 48,000 rounds a year, and our guns are fine, all right? So maintenance your shit. If you're got, but we do, we have seen plenty of things fail and break on Ambi guns, on stock guns, levers break, shit just fails, all right? I'm gonna show you both ways using Ambi levers, Ambi switches, whatever, things that I've found more efficient than others, and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I'm gonna reload my gun traditionally, both in emergency reload and in tap reload. My first rounds are gonna go up to that blue round, or that blue space, I fire, I get what? A light and reduced recoil impulse. And from there, I already know that this finger needs to go off trigger and go where? Mag, Mag release. What do I do with my support side hand immediately? Yes, I'm gonna be going immediately as I drop my mag. I'm gonna keep this in the, inside the pocket of the shoulder workspace, insert my mag, send the bolt home, and now go back to work on the white section. So, where were my eyes during the entirety of the process? Target. Up until a point of what? Accomplishing a task, right? Just like we talked about with pistol yesterday. This mindset of I need to be target focused every time, every time I go for a fucking reload, it's retarded, right? I can dual focus, I promise you're not gonna move very far. If my eyes are up, and now I need to conduct a reload, look where my eyes are, 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 how fast did I properly seat that magazine? Just one second. And my eyes were actually on the magazine well. Yes, precisely. Make sure you guys are actually focused on the task at hand. You don't have to stay target focused the entire time. You don't have to stare at your freaking magazine well the whole entire time. All right, so what I just conducted was attack reload to reset the drill. Again, come up, count for mechanic wall set, fire that one round, drop, insert, up, send home, back up, where are my eyes? as I recover my sight alignment. One, two, three, right? Now, resetting this drill, weapon goes back on safe, I look for my mag, I get to a controlled carry position on this rifle. Then I can L-shape it in, or I can grab low on this mag, high on this mag, and I'm using my finger, everyone sees my finger is splitting the difference, that way I can remain 
in control of that magazine as I go back to retain it, throw it in a dump pouch, whatever I'm gonna do, all right? Resetting the drill, <clears throat> one more time. Traditional sense. If you guys need to be on this side to see how I'm sending the bolt home, it's just hitting that panel right there. All right, so I come up again, light and reduce recoil, back up, insert, on. What are my eyes looking for when I'm up on target in recovering my sight picture and creating alignment? What's that? Yeah, looking for a home base. I could care less where the dot is. I could even include this. I'm just focused on that home base, accounting for offset if I need to. All right, now running the ambi switch. Mag, the uh, mag release is here. Nice thing about that SIG MCX, it has that little ambi lever here. This will really help and assist you guys when it comes to that efficiency of this finger now doing multiple tasks, all right? That way I can just insert, send home, and I'm back up. <clears throat> the other thing, workspace positions. I've been doing this in the pocket of my shoulder the whole time. Not everyone can do that. Some people need to fire and drop, come to an underarm carry where they're nice and strong, send it back home, back up, and now back up on target. So I came underneath my arm, inserted the mag, then my eyes were where? Back up on target, creating home base, and now back up. Now, if my intent is to fire in between an emergency reload, am I putting the weapon back on safe? The age old fucking question. Based off the safety rules, if my intent is to fire again, I'm not going to take the extra time it takes to put the weapon back on safe. It's kind of asinine if you're adding a step, then take it away. My intent is to continue to fire. So I am going to reload, get this weapon system back up and running, and I'm going to then fire again. All right? Look where my trigger finger is the entire time. Not putting the weapon back on safe. Fire, drop, insert, send home. It was nowhere near the trigger. It's actually doing an extra task. All right, so for me, I don't put the weapon back on safe. You guys figure out what you wanna do and what's gonna be the most efficient way of reloading your weapon system. Attack reloads, emergency reloads, they're covered. Any lefties in the class? All right, perfect. Lefties up. All right, so you don't have any ambi features. Your only option is to use the release button and obviously the bolt release. So you have to use your thumb from your opposite hand and the index finger of your shooting hand. Okay, so it's gonna look just like this. Cut back, break into workspace, drop the mag. Go up for the new one. Index finger goes up to home base. Insert. Just like that, man. Any questions? So, junctional wounds specifically, that's what this has been for, okay? Plus, things that we cannot get a tourniquet on, uh, we're gonna pack and then hold pressure on. If you pack a groin wound uh, and now holding pressure, how long do you have to hold pressure on that? Yeah, until somebody, until you get rid of the patient. So, as you're you know, working through your, your assessment and you're helping your patient, you pack a wound, now you're kind of stuck there. So that's the benefit to you know, using a knee potentially if it's in a groin. Once you've got it packed, you can hold pressure on it. You can get your hands back free, but you need to pay attention uh, and, and look at it again. So you, once you've finished it, don't just think, oh, it's done, it's, I've fixed it. Make sure you check it again. Make sure the bleeding's controlled. Stay right here, I'm gonna be right back to check on you, okay?